Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this online information session presented by the University of British Columbia. Uh, good morning, good afternoon or good evening depending on where you're joining us from today. My name is Avneet Johal. I am an Associate International Student Recruiter and Advisor here at UBC and I'm also joined by a current UBC student, Sakina. Uh, Sakina, perhaps you'd like to share a little bit about yourself before we get started? All right, so welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Sakina. I have just finished my fourth year here in the Faculty of Science studying neuroscience or biopsychology. I was actually an international student from Tanzania, but I've been around for quite some time, so I do consider Vancouver second home now. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to share my experience with you and tell you a little bit more about my time at UBC. Great. Thank you very much, Sakina. Uh, so with our agenda today, we'll look to cover a few key themes. Uh, firstly, why UBC and what the university has to offer. We'll look at some information surrounding tuition fees and scholarships, and we'll also look at some information surrounding the application and admissions process. Uh, I'd like to take this moment to let you know that this session, this presentation is being recorded and it will be available online in its entirety afterwards. So if you are disconnected for any reason, no need to worry. You can always log back in afterwards and you can watch the presentation as often as you like. Uh, so the University of British Columbia is consistently ranked as one of the world's top 40 research universities. And some of our key features include a spectacular location, excellence in academics and research, and a commitment to active learning. We'll be exploring each of these themes in a little more detail as we progress through the presentation today. But at this point, I'd like to ask Sakina, what attracted you uh, primarily to UBC? That's a great question, Avneet, and thanks so much for that question. Um, so I initially heard about UBC uh, because a recruiter came to visit my uh, high school and talked to us a little bit about UBC. Also, I did have quite a few of my high school seniors that decided to come to UBC. Um, I really just wanted to go to a school that was recognized for its academic excellence. And as you mentioned, it's been on the top 40 of the, the world's universities. And so it was definitely something that I wanted to consider. But also uh, one of the biggest factors was financial assistance. I was looking to go somewhere that I could be well supported for the four or more years that I would be here. And UBC is definitely one of those universities um, out of the very few in North America that would actually offer to support you here as an international student. And that's really one of the key reasons as to why I consider UBC. Great. A uh, little bit of a fun question. Uh, what is your favorite thing about being a UBC student? Ah, now looking back at those four years, um, I would definitely say diversity and not just diversity in the people you meet. There are people that I've met from countries that I've never even heard of. And um, it was definitely exciting to be living on the same floor with people from South Africa and Europe and learning so much more about the world, even just being in your own dorm room or your floor. Um, but even the diversity of opportunities, um, I didn't even know I would be interested in neuroscience or psychology, um, but coming here and discovering that I had such a passion for it and really knowing that there are opportunities that exist outside of my comfort zone was really good. Um, but yeah, the diversity of academics as well and the diversity of opportunities, I've been able to kind of get involved in different, lots of different things that I will share with you later as well. But it's just been really exciting to know that there's so many opportunities that exist. Great. Thank you very much for sharing. So the University of British Columbia does have two campus locations on the west coast of Canada in the province of British Columbia. Uh, today we're presenting from UBC's Vancouver campus, which is located in the city of Vancouver, and UBC's Okanagan campus is located in the city of Kelowna, which is approximately an hour by air or four hours by road east of Vancouver. And you can see both campuses and cities outlined on the map currently on the screen. Uh, the province of British Columbia with uh, forest, coastlines, freshwater lakes, mountain ranges, it really is blessed with an abundance of natural beauty and breathtaking views. It's a great place to live, learn, work and play. Uh, whichever campus you explore or you visit, you'll find the same world-class facilities and research opportunities coupled with an active lifestyle that genuinely promotes a good balance between work and play. Uh, each campus provides access to world-class skiing, snowboarding, yoga, paddleboarding, uh, outdoor concerts, festivals, and so much more. Uh, here on screen now, we can see a photograph of UBC's Vancouver campus on the left-hand side and UBC's Okanagan campus on the right-hand side. Uh, while both offer one and the same degree, uh, there are certainly some differences between each location, and uh, that culminates to provide a two unique experiences uh, each of which attracts students for a variety of reasons. Uh, 
Uh, here's a photograph. It's a stunning photograph of the city of Vancouver. I've seen it many, many times. Every time I see it, it reminds me uh, the good fortune that I have uh, to live in the city of Vancouver. And uh, we can see the downtown core and one of North America's largest urban parks, Stanley Park, as the central focus of the image. And up to the top left on that peninsula is where UBC's Vancouver campus is located. So it gives you some idea of the geographical distribution between the downtown core and the campus community. Uh, the city of Vancouver is consistently recognized as one of the world's most livable cities, and it's striving to be the greenest city on the planet by the close of this decade. Uh, Vancouver itself is a very cosmopolitan city. It's very international in its makeup. Uh, it's forward thinking, and it's definitely a dynamic place to live and learn. Uh, on that note, Sakina, what is your favorite thing about living in Vancouver? That's a great question of me, and it's hard to choose one thing, um, really, but it's just that there's so much to do in this city. Um, you mentioned I could be skiing in the morning and go down to the beach if I wanted to, um, not just the city, but UBC campus on its own. We have a Japanese garden right on campus, a beautiful view of the mountains. And if you want to go down to the beach for a sunset, it's all right there. You can do it all in one day, which is very exciting. And I always had something to do. There was always a way to take a break from your paper that you were writing and just take a casual stroll around Pacific Square Park or anything like that. Um, but even the city, it's such a vibrant city. Downtown Vancouver is only a 20 minute bus ride away. So every time I had a chance, I would get on a bus and go downtown. Um, and it's so exciting to know that you can find Mexican, Indian and Chinese cuisine all on one street. So you don't even have to go that far <laughs> if you're looking for a specific cuisine. So it's always really exciting to do that. Downtown Vancouver is beautiful, even if you're just walking around. Um, I've definitely enjoyed going out, especially now during the summer when we have a lot of sunshine. It's always just nice walking around. You have some beautiful views and I've definitely loved the city. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to add to the uh, international cuisine. I think before I'd come to Vancouver, I had never even tried sushi. And mm -hmm. now it is definitely a staple of my weekly, if not some weeks, <laughs> daily diet. Uh, so that's the city of Vancouver. Here's a photograph. It's an overview shot of UBC's Vancouver campus, uh, complete with the sparkling Pacific Ocean, mountain ranges in the back, and forest to the side that can be seen in this photograph. Uh, the academic core of the campus, which is the central focus of this image, it's designed so that most of your classes, your support services, your resources in any given faculty are all located together. And that helps students find their home on campus. And uh, so you'll start seeing familiar faces quite quickly and the campus shrinks in size fairly quickly during your first year on campus. Uh, Sakina talked about both the campus and, and some of the amenities that are located on campus. Uh, we have a hospital, there are emergency services, there's also a grocery store. There's most of what you would need for your day-to-day -day life, but as Sakina mentioned, uh, the downtown core is only about 20 minutes away by bus, and uh, all of our students, our undergraduate students, receive what's called a universal transit pass, what we like to call a U-pass, and that provides unlimited access to transportation throughout the greater Vancouver area. So that can be your SkyTrain, it can be your C buses, or of course your regular buses, uh, to explore the city and perhaps find a corner or the spot in the city that you might like the best. UBC's Okanagan campus is located in the city of Kelowna. Uh, the, the foothills, the lakes, the trails of the Okanagan Valley really make for a perfect and a very picturesque backdrop for the pursuit of academic excellence and intellectual development. Uh, the city of Kelowna, it's a great place again to live and work uh, also to learn. Uh, there's a thriving arts and music scene and the city really does have something to offer for all students. Uh, these offerings can range from wonderful dining experiences at farm to table restaurants, uh, to living and working in an innovation and tech sector. Uh, this is a photograph of UBC's Okanagan campus, uh, home to about 9,000 students. The Okanagan campus provides a very close-knit learning environment, yet again, it's only about 20 to 25 minutes away from all the amenities and resources that you'll find in downtown Kelowna. Again, equipped with a U-Pass, just like here in Vancouver, uh, students can explore the region and uh, they can go mountain biking, hiking, paddle boarding, and explore all of the beauty of the Okanagan Valley. Uh, if students wish to stay closer to home, there's a lot of uh, mountain trails and hiking trails right next to the campus that provide activity and adventure in every season. Uh, accommodation and housing is, of course, an important consideration uh, for all students. UBC does guarantee on-campus housing for all first-year students applying from high school uh, should they wish to live on campus. Uh, most of the first-year students at UBC do choose to live on campus and it is highly recommended. It's a great way to immerse yourself in the UBC experience 
It's a great way to meet new people, make new friends, and it's a great way to become part of a very supportive campus community and environment that really helps with that transition from high school to university life. Uh, and on, on that note, Sakina, I know you've spent a number of years in residence, um, so perhaps you can talk a little bit about your residence experience and maybe touch on why it's such a great way for students to transition into university life. Great question, Afid. And I, yes, that's true. I've actually spent all four years living here on campus in residence, so I've absolutely loved the experience. Um, in my first year, I lived in one of the first year residences called Place Fannie. Um, I lived in an all girls house and initially it was a little, uh, I'm coming from a family with a bunch of siblings and so it was always really nice to have people around and I did get a single room so initially I was quite um, nervous about the fact that I'd be spending a lot of time in four walls and not having anyone around but residence is just such a great experience it's such a way it's such a great way to build community these are people that you're meeting going to meet every day when you're brushing your teeth in the morning and when you come back from classes at night and it's really hard to avoid each other even if you want to um, but it's really nice to kind of be able to uh, build that community before you venture out UBC is a huge university and from somebody that's coming from a small high school it was a little bit overwhelming initially but it was really nice to know that you kind of could build that small community before you uh, ventured out into the UBC community. Um, one of the things that made my residence experience so great was my residence advisor. Um, she was basically there to kind of answer any questions. She was there to be the peer support. So anytime I was feeling homesick, I remember she was there to kind of take care of me. On Thanksgiving, she kind of gave out pie to everybody, to those people who weren't able to kind of go home for Thanksgiving. But I just remember this one day where she decided to have a spa night. We were all um, having midterms and so we were all really stressed out and so she just invited us to this little spa night where she made um, some smoothies we had face masks on and we did our nails and so it was a great time for us to kind of come together and get our mind off of what was going on in university but really to build that community and after first year I kind of lived with the some of the people that I met on my floor so they have become some of my best friends and it's nice to know that these are people you'll meet but aside from that it's also just kind of building and getting to know a lot of different people this is people that you're kind of your first point of contact at university. These are the first people you're going to see when you move in. And it's really nice to get to know them. There'll also be people from lots of different places. They could be Canadians on the same floor, but also people from all around, all around the world. So it's really nice to be able to kind of build those relationships. I highly recommend living in residence um, simply because it's a great way to build that community, especially if you're really worried about how you're going to get involved with such a big university. It's just really nice to know that you can start from residence. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, myself as a student, I also lived in class venue in my first year and we had about 40 students on the floor and uh, over 10 countries represented. And so it was a great global community to be a part of on that floor and some of the global perspectives that I gained and just the experiences of living in residence. And so and for, for those reasons and many more, it's highly recommended for first year students to live on residence and get the full exposure to the UBC experience and really become accustomed with the resources and services that are available on campus. And so jumping to academics very quickly, uh, here's a list of some UBC undergraduate programs uh, with over 200 undergraduate majors available at UBC. This list is certainly not exhaustive. And uh, to find out more about all of the study options that are available, you're welcome to check out you.ubc.ca for the complete list. Uh, some of the exciting options that I don't think are on this list here include the Bachelor of International Economics and also the Media Studies program. Uh, on this slide here, some of the exciting options we can see are business and computer science, and then it ranges all the way to some of the options in the School of Kinesiology. Uh, myself, as a student and a graduate of UBC, I completed a double major in the Faculty of Arts, uh, but with so much to choose from and so many different study programs available, I've always appreciated UBC's approach to academics, which is very interdisciplinary in nature. Uh, so even though I was completing a double major in the Faculty of Arts, I was able to take physics courses, I was able to take courses in computer science, and uh, that really broadened my, my uh, academic exposure, and it really added tremendous value to my overall degree and also to my UBC experience. Uh, so the academic path at UBC, it really is a case of uh, students finding their own journey and creating their own degree and their own curriculum uh, to follow their academic passions. And so what that might mean for a student is they might major in business, and minor in music or language. Uh, a student might do a major in political science and couple that with a major in environmental science. Uh, a student might do a dual degree between the arts and the sciences. So lots of options available. And the great thing about that is not only can students follow their passions, uh, but also students can create a degree that's unique to them. And uh, maybe not only at UBC, but it might be unique in the world. Uh, so it's a great way to explore the different programs that are available and broaden the academic exposure while you're at university 
and uh, set yourself apart as you move forward in whatever you might do beyond your time at UBC. Uh, so speaking about academics, Sakina, uh, the next question is uh, perhaps you could share a little bit about what you've studied at UBC. Great question, Avneet. And, and I did mention that I've studied uh, neuroscience or biopsychology, uh, which a lot of people is like, what is this program? Uh, so it's just basically the Bachelor of Science in Psychology. So it does give a science edge to psychology. Um, I was somebody that was very interested in the sciences. So of course, I did apply to the Faculty of Science and initially had this dream that I was going to do biochemistry to begin with and then go down the medical stream. Um, but I was sitting in my first year organic chemistry class um, when I realized that this might not be a good relationship. Um, it was one of those courses where I found myself kind of really needing to motivate myself to do the work in that course. Um, and it just felt like something that I wasn't really, really interested in. And so I just decided that maybe I'll think about something else. Um, at the same time, I was taking a psychology elective. Um, by one of the greatest professors, who I highly recommend. Um, but he was just so interested and so passionate about what he was teaching. And I just sat in one of my classes and I said, I want to be like you someday. And I just decided to go into his office hours, which is great because professors here are really, really, really welcoming and actually want to get to know you. So I highly recommend that you go chat with them whenever you have a chance. Um, but I went to sit down with him, had a conversation about how I was really enjoying his class, but I wasn't sure if psychology was the thing I wanted to do. And we had a long chat. It was about 45 minutes, uh, just really about the psychology program at UBC and whether it would be a fit for me. Um, we do have psychology both in the arts and sciences here. It's a much larger program in the arts than it is in the science. But um, I loved being in a small program. I did uh, choose to apply to the biopsychology program, got in, and it was very exciting because it was kind of, I guess, one of the best decisions I've been able to make. Um, I was able to meet some great professors that I'm also working on, like, health initiatives on with right now. Um, but aside from that, I've also gotten to know the students that were in the program really well because it was such a small program, but also the research opportunities has just been so great because it's such a small program and the degree, the amount of research that's being conducted at UBC, especially in psychology, for example, there's anything from gambling or rat research, there's literally anything they can think of. So it's really exciting to know that there's lots of areas that you could potentially pursue. And so I was able to kind of get involved in research as well. And that's just really why I chose to do it. I really, really enjoyed psychology and I'm actually even thinking about doing a graduate degree in clinical psychology. Great. So a lot of exposure to yeah. both academic, <laughs> academics and research, which is excellent. Uh, so there's a little bit about academics and uh, Sakina, you touched on uh, some of the application process a little bit in some of your uh, mm -hmm. commentary. And so at this point, it might be helpful to go through uh, some of the steps that are required for students to apply to UBC. Uh, the first thing to think about is, of course, your program and campus. Uh, when you're making the application online, you'll have the option to make two selections your first and second program choice. Now, your first and second program choice can be from the same campus, so both from UBC's Vancouver campus or both from UBC's Okanagan campus, or your first and second choice can include one choice from one campus and the other choice from the other campus. So again, even before you apply, there's flexibility in the approach and you can choose which programs best match your interests and where you might like to study. Um, Second, it's very important to check the program requirements. Uh, in addition to the general requirements required to be admitted at UBC, there may also be some program-specific requirements, which I'll touch on a little bit later on in the next slide. Uh, as far as the application online is concerned, it's important to answer all of the questions that you're prompted with. Uh, this will include information about a personal profile, uh, which is about six or seven questions, maybe 200 to 250 words per question, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide as well. Uh, during this time, you can also apply for housing. And then once you've paid for uh, the applicable fees for the application, uh, you'll receive an email once your application has been submitted that will let you know what documents are outstanding and what documents you need to provide uh, to UBC. And it will also include the deadline for the provision of those documents. Uh, so with that being said, it's very important that uh, we're able to stay in touch and that your email address is both correct and active. Now, for more information about the application process, you can see the link in the bottom right of the screen there, you.ubc.ca forward slash admissions. And that's a great resource if you are thinking about applying to UBC. And so the admission process, uh, it is definitely competitive and it is based both upon a strong academic profile. So in other words, your high school coursework and grades and also information about extracurricular and co-curricular uh, achievements. And this is where the personal profile comes into play. Uh, so the personal profile is an opportunity for students uh, to tell us a little bit more about themselves. 
um, to explain maybe some of their accomplishments and some of their activity inside or outside the classroom, things that they've learned that have maybe shaped their perspective on uh, perhaps their community or perhaps the, uh, the, the country in which they live or the world in general, uh, different bits of information that might set the student apart and that might showcase a little bit more about what you might bring to the UBC community. And with respect to the personal profile, again, at the same website, you.ubc.ca, there's an excellent section all about the personal profile, what we're looking for, some key tips and advice, and there's also a video that helps explain more about the process and more about what we're looking for. Uh, speaking about the personal profile, it's worth noting that we really are looking for students to remain true to themselves, and we're hoping that each student's unique voice can echo through their responses in their personal profile answers. So that's just things to consider, uh, but definitely look up the personal profile section on the website for more information before completing that part of the application. And so I touched on the possibility of program specific admission requirements applying for certain programs. And an example of this might be the math requirement to apply to the Sutter School of Business at UBC's Vancouver campus, or similarly applying to the Faculty of Management at UBC's Okanagan campus. There's also a math requirement for that program. So have a look on the website for the different programs and have a look at what the uh, program specific requirements might be and make sure you meet those. And if you do have any questions, you're all, again, always welcome uh, to contact us with the information provided at that same website. Uh, there's also an English language admission standard. Uh, in addition to that, depending on where students are studying from, there might be little bits and pieces that are also required. So for example, students who are studying uh, in the United States and applying to UBC, they are required to submit either an SAT or an ACT score with the writing section. Um, so little bits and pieces to consider. So definitely review all of the requirements uh, well in advance of any application that you might make. Uh, for those students who are engaging in more rigorous coursework during their high school years, so for example, the International Baccalaureate Program or the Advanced Placement Program, or for students who have completed any college or university level courses during their high school years, uh, UBC does recognize the advanced rigor of those curricula, and we do provide first year credit uh, for certain courses. Again, on the website, there's a wonderful list of all of the different ways that a student might receive first year transfer credit. Uh, so definitely have a look on the website for more complete and thorough information. And so here's a slide about some of the financial uh, information, and you can see some of the total costs. This is for the winter session 2014-2015, and as you can see, for international students, the tuition fees are approximately uh, 25,000 Canadian dollars, and for Canadian citizens and permanent residents, it's approximately 5,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, the major expenses, which include your student fees, and that also includes the transit pass, uh, plus other items such as books, study equipment, calculators, pens, pencils, etc., and also living costs, accommodation, food, medical insurance, a cell phone plan, a little bit of uh, spending money, all of that totaled together, and the estimate is about 14,000 Canadian dollars uh, for all students. And at the bottom, you can see an estimated total for one session or one year's worth of study at UBC. It's approximately 40,000 Canadian dollars for an international student and approximately $20,000 for a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. Now online, there's an excellent tool called the UBC Cost Calculator, which I highly recommend in terms of planning uh, the financial budget for your degree program. And if you do go visit the UBC Cost Calculator, you'll also see some other helpful information. And so for example, if you were to go to the website today, uh, you'll notice that for international students, the increase in tuition up until 2018 has been capped at a maximum of 2%. So there's lots of little bits and pieces of, of information online uh, that will help plan the entire budget uh, for your full degree program. Uh, so definitely have a look at the UBC cost calculator uh, when you're thinking about planning your budget for your degree program. Uh, in terms of awards and scholarships, as uh, Sakina talked about the financial support that uh, she's received to study here, at UBC. Uh, UBC does allocate $10 million to support international students through a variety of ways. Uh, some of these include our major international awards. We have entrance awards, and these include our Outstanding International Student and International Major Entrance Scholarship Award, or OIS and IMES. There are also continuing awards and in-program merit awards. These might be awarded by the university. They might be awarded by a faculty, a school, or a department. So a lot of different ways that uh, in-program merit awards might be received. And there's also on-campus work programs 
that are available for uh, all students uh, to help with, uh, with the financial cost of attending university. Uh, at this point, it's probably worth noting again for those students who are studying in the United States that uh, FAFSA student loans can apply uh, to be transferred and applied here at UBC. Uh, it's also worth noting for international scholarships that we do have both needs-based and merit-based awards. For needs-based awards, there is a separate application. So again, please review the website for those. And uh, it's, it's a great feature of the application for international students. All international students are automatically assessed for merit-based awards by virtue of applying to UBC. And so Sakit and I have both talked about uh, sort of the, the global reputation of the University of British Columbia. Uh, in part, this is due to the diversity of programming available, there's a wealth of research funding, uh, there's a lot of connection with Nobel laureates, and so there's a lot of great stats and rankings for UBC. Um, but uh, I mean, that, that's great for the university, but I hope the question that you have in mind as prospective students is what, might, what, what does that mean for students who are currently here, and what might that mean for a student who is thinking about studying at UBC? Now, one of the great benefits is that we are a research institution, and so Sakina talked a little bit about her previous experience in terms of the wealth of research opportunities available on campus. Uh, that's certainly the case for a lot of students and being a research institution means that students as an undergraduate student from day one of their undergraduate career all the way through their time as a student have the chance to engage in exciting research opportunities. Uh, myself as a student in the Faculty of Arts, I was very interested in international space law, uh, connected with a professor here on campus, carried that research throughout my time as an undergraduate student and beyond and was recently one of two Canadian representatives at a United Nations conference on international space law. And so that was my research conducted at UBC in action uh, at the UN, which is a great experience. At the top right of the screen, we can see a, we can see a picture of the UBC super mileage eco car, which is a vehicle conceived of, designed, developed by undergraduate engineering students and it can travel across the continent of North America. So where we're sitting now in Vancouver, all the way out east, past Toronto, out into Halifax on one single gallon of gasoline. So it was a remarkable achievement by, again, undergraduate engineering students, recognized by Time Magazine as one of their inventions of the year. And again, a great testament to the type of research activity that undergraduate students can engage in here at UBC. Now, of course, none of that happens without the support of world-class facilities, and there are plenty of those both at UBC's Vancouver campus and also at UBC's Okanagan campus. At the bottom right of your screen, you can see a photograph from the BD Biodiversity Center, which is an excellent resource. It's a teaching resource, a learning resource for faculty and students alike. And uh, there in that picture, you can see a photograph of a blue whale skeleton, which is a unique exhibit and one of many unique exhibits that can be found in that museum. And to the left of the screen, there's a photograph from the inside of the Center for Interactive Research in Sustainability, which is actually one of my uh, favorite buildings on campus. It's quite a new building. Uh, it is one of, one of North America's uh, most sustainable buildings. It actually produces more energy than it consumes, and it improves the energy efficiency of buildings around it. And so it's a, rem a remarkable structure. And again, it's a great indicator of where we hope to go as a campus community, and that is by 2050 to have the entire campus net positive in terms of its energy consumption which is a fairly aggressive target, especially in relation to uh, the other top universities in the world, but we're well on the way to reaching that mark and that at sustain.ubc.ca, there's a lot of great infographics and information about how we're making it to that goal in 2050. And so I talked at the beginning of the presentation about active learning and UBC's commitment to active learning. And, and what that means is the recognition that a lot of learning can take place outside of the classroom. And an example of that is student clubs, of which there are over 300 available at UBC for your selection. So there's really something for everyone. And if there's a hobby or an interest that you have and that club doesn't exist, you can find some friends and you can create that club. So from academic, social, cultural, to environmental, political, athletic clubs, there really is something for everyone on campus. Uh, myself as a student, I was heavily involved with student government. Uh, one year I was the president of the Arts Undergraduate Society and another year I was able to sit on the UBC Senate and I was also able to compete and represent UBC um, both in Canada and abroad with the debating society and also with the model United Nations uh, teams. Yeah, so a lot of great experiences and a lot of great ways uh, to get involved uh, with clubs on campus. Um, on that note, uh, Sakina, before I pass over to the next slide, yeah. uh, perhaps you can tell us about some of the ways you've managed to get involved on campus. 
Great question, Daphne. Um, so as Amit mentioned, 370 plus clubs, really large university, tons of opportunities. How do you get started? Um, so initially in first year, I was like, yeah, this is such a big place. There's lots of things I want to do. So Imagine Day, which is kind of the one day orientation program that's all open to all first year students, you'll really get to know a lot of these student involvement opportunities that kind of exist outside of class. And so all these tables were set out on the day that I came for Imagine Day orientation. And I was talking to a bunch of students. Of course, I signed up for 15 clubs until all the emails came in. And I was like, yeah, maybe I don't have the time for 15 clubs. Um, but I was really interested in that time to um, join the International Students Association, which is basically, um, it's a support group for international students on campus, as well as an advocacy group. So we help kind of um, advocate for international students' rights in terms of tuition, housing, all that sort of stuff. So I initially um, joined as a member and then kind of worked alongside the International Students Association over my time here. And during my last year, I was able to kind of serve as president for the International Students Association. Another thing that I really um, enjoyed kind of getting involved with was the UBC Pottery Club. I had never tried pottery before and thought it might be a good uh, opportunity to actually try it out. So I did sign up for it in my second year and I have been able to kind of design some beautiful cups and bowls that I've shared with my roommates now. I also decided to take a couple of dance classes with the UBC Dance Club that I also have never danced before, but it was a very interesting experience as well. Um, but I also chose to get involved with the student ambassador or the campus tours program here simply because I love meeting people. I love sharing my story and my love for UBC and I love hearing about other people's stories and I decided to be able to share my love for this institution with future students. So I've been working for the campus tours program for three years now. Um, I've met lots of interesting students and I've also seen a lot of students that decided to come to UBC, which is very exciting. But throughout these opportunities, I've been able to kind of learn so much more about myself, um, learn so much more from the people I've been able to connect with and learn so much more about the world really. And I'm really, really excited. I'm also the kind of person that really, I love being active. I just really don't like being at home and, or lying in bed for a while. Um, so it's just really nice knowing that I have tons of opportunities that I've been able to get involved with and it's something that you all can get involved with as well there's lots of ways there's clubs days which is when you get to know all the clubs that are um, present on campus as well as Imagine Day which is when you'll get to know all the student opportunities that do exist outside of class and so I highly recommend um, that you get busy and take advantage of all the opportunities you never know what's going to come out of it so definitely do that. <laughs> Great so lots of ways to get involved uh, at UBC. And so building on that active learning and learning outside of the classroom, the co-op opportunity is a great way, again, to expand upon some of what Sakina was saying in terms of that growth, be it academic, personal and professional in a lot of different areas across UBC. So the co-op program or the cooperative degree program allows students to engage in paid internship placements during their time as an undergraduate student. So it's a great way to get that professional experience on your resume. It's a great way to apply what you're learning in the classroom to the real world world of work, I suppose. And it's also a great way for students to find out really what they might enjoy beyond their degree. And so it's a great way to try out new activities, try out new things, maybe take your degree and your studies in a different perspective and a different trajectory. And so you can really find out more and it can help plan your degree as you move forward. It's a great networking opportunity. A lot of mentorship is available through the co-op program and it really prepares students for success beyond their time as an undergraduate student. And so if you do have the option when you're a student, if you're a student at UBC, uh, then certainly think about engaging with the co-op placement program as there's some great experiences and some wonderful student profile stories available on the website as well. And so in terms of creating uh, that community, that global community on campus, uh, UBC does attract the best and brightest from around the world, but we also send students abroad each and every term, over 1,000 students to engage in experiences in other places. Uh, so if you've ever thought about studying in Paris, Tokyo, Bogota, Buenos Aires, Istanbul, wherever that might be in the world, we have a Go Global office and that's the place that helps facilitate these opportunities. And so students might go abroad to engage in a research project, they might go abroad for volunteer work, it might be for a group study project. So a lot of different reasons why students might go abroad uh, to expand upon their learning and, and build upon their academics here at UBC. Uh, these placements can range from two weeks to eight months, depending on what might be the best fit for a student. Uh, so that's another thing to consider. If you are thinking about studying at UBC, there's always the opportunity to go elsewhere in the world for a short or longer period of time, again, to maybe to learn a language, to expose yourself to a different culture, and again, gain a better understanding of the world in which we live. Uh, so this photograph here is of uh, athletics and recreation, obviously. Uh, of course, an important element of most people's day-to-day -day life, and certainly is the case at uh, UBC. 
Now, the images here, all the athletes, they, they all look quite intense. Uh, they might be varsity athletes. So it's worth mentioning that across UBC, we, we are home to Canada's largest intramural program, uh, which means that students can engage in a variety of sports at really any level, from complete beginner to intermediate to competitive, and then, of course, at the varsity level as well. And there's a great culture of, of involvement and participation at UBC as well. So it's not just about sitting on the sidelines and cheering on the team, but it's about getting involved and trying out new activities, whether it's playing tennis on the tennis courts, basketball, skating, uh, swimming, playing rugby, whatever it might be on campus, uh, to keep active, stay fit, and keep that balance between academics and an active lifestyle. Uh, so Sakina talked about uh, trying out a dance class. <laughs> Uh, so whether it's trying out a dance class for the first time, trying out martial, martial arts for the first time, uh, or training to be UBC's 232nd Olympian, uh, there's a lot on offer on campus and a lot that you can do. Uh, so in terms, again, of fostering that global community, uh, our incoming class this past year comprised of over 140 countries and over 15% of UBC students are international. And that's, it's a great way to expand learning once again, because as a student who's in that environment, in that community, you're exposed to global perspectives. Now, I remember myself as an undergraduate student having a political science course where very often the professor would ask a question that's a hot topic in current global affairs and the different perspectives that came from across the room uh, were all very exciting, some were new, some I hadn't thought of before. So it's a great environment to, in which to learn and again, expand that global understanding and build that global perspective for global citizens. And as I mentioned earlier, nearly 20% of UBC students will study abroad during their time as an undergraduate student, and over half of the student population is fluent in a second language. So that international community, Sakina's talked about it, I've mentioned it as well, in terms of living in residence, uh, but also in your lectures, seminars, labs, uh, and other areas across campus, it really is a great benefit. Uh, it also means after you graduate, you can travel the world and you never need a hotel. Uh, you've met friends and you've built community from every corner of the globe. And so it's a great added value resource in that sense too. And so that concludes our presentation for today. And there are a number of ways in which you can connect with UBC should you have any further questions. There's our Twitter handle, there's Facebook, YouTube, and there's also an online admissions blog available as well. Uh, so if you do have any further questions or you would like to connect with UBC, we would welcome your questions. Uh, so you're welcome to connect in any of those ways. Uh, you can also ask questions in this current session. And uh, other than that, on behalf of the team, Sakina and myself, uh, thank you very much for joining us for this, for this presentation. Uh, thank you.